This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back everyone. Haven't done the mail in a while, so today we are going to feature work sent in by people like you. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so first up is this book that comes to us from Owen Hartford, who lives in Massachusetts. This is called From Icicles to Africa. Owen also includes a letter which reads, Hello, Ted, I'm including a book that I have just recently published. It seems that most of the books you receive are from younger photographers, at least younger than me. I'm 79, and this is my first book. I know that it is a conventional practice to make a book around a specific topic, place, or theme. I don't usually go out photographing, trying to tell a story, document a place, or follow one concept for very long. But in looking at my photos over the last 60 years or so, it has become apparent that many of my photos fell into themes that I may not have been aware of at the time. Sometimes you go with your gut instincts and then figure out what it's about later on. I don't think of this as a retrospective as such. There are quite a few photos that I didn't include because it didn't seem to fit with anything else. I've always enjoyed a variety of ways of seeing things and subject matters that's particularly what makes photography interesting, challenging, and rewarding for me. Cheers, Owen. I'm assuming this is Owen in the picture on the back. Very cool, and he's also a musician, so bonus points there. Okay, so Owen, I'm gonna give you a little critique here, and the first thing I wanna say is the photographs in here are absolutely outstanding. You have an incredible range to the work that you do. There's a lot of styles that are shot here, you know, spanning um, your entire photography career. I think that's a really significant accomplishment. It's really impressive. And the second thing I want to say that I love about this is the fact that you were very candid about your age being 79, and I think that is awesome. The thing is, is that most people, as we get older, we tend to slow down a little bit. And so to see somebody take the reins and go for it with their first book is something that I really admire, I really respect, and I really dig. So I want to say congrats on that. All right, so I'm going to dig a little deeper here. I'm going to critique just a little bit on this because you also said in your letter that you didn't think of this as a retrospective so much, but you were categorizing your work into different areas. Well, it ends up being a retrospective in that sense. Now, one thing you completely kicked it off with, I think in the right way, is the title, From Icicles to Africa. And these two images, this is really interesting because you're drawing a connection visually between two different places at two different eras that it doesn't seem that they belong together. And so my first inclination when I started looking at this, photographic diversities, is I wanted to dig in and I wanted to see how you get from icicles to Africa. What is that connection? And so that's something just to think about maybe down the line in the future. And I don't know if you actually intended this to be that way, but that's kind of the way that I read it to begin with. You open it up and you start off with these series of wonderful abstracts that follow these geological patterns. It's really well laid out. It's very well thought out. The images place well together and the flow is really good. And then you get into your second chapter, which is going to be plants and trees. The images in here are incredible. And this is where I'm starting to think in my mind, okay, somehow this is going to weave back into Africa. And then it starts going off on some tangents. Now, these tangents are really good. And I think that probably the fact that you are so talented as a photographer and you do have such a wide range to your work, actually complicates things because we're starting to go so far onto another avenue that it just looks like another series of images. In fact, I'm double checking to make sure they're all from the same person. And then there's a chapter that you get into called Blocky that has computer generated images. I'm gonna be really honest, that is probably the weakest in this book. It just does not speak to me. That's just my personal taste. But it detracts from some of the other things that are so good. And I also love the series that you get into later with spaces. Then you follow this with cityscapes. There's Out in Public, which is street photography. There's a chapter in here called Penny, which I assume is your wife. This is a really, really nicely done chapter. It's just a really nice illustration. You get into environmental portraits, and then finally we get into Liberia in the end. And so it feels like we just took such a long journey to get there. My advice to you, and this is the most difficult part of photography, is you've got to edit. You've got to decide that these images are really good. They may not be right for this project. You're gonna save them for something else. And how do you make those connections and tell that story? And I also want to bring this back too, because I have a background in music. Music, I know you do as well. And so thinking about music, and really, I don't really have formal training in visual arts. So everything that I have that I think about comes back from my musical training. Think of it like this. Sometimes you might have a composition that's like, say you write a song or something. And then let's say you're treating this in the context of a song versus the context of an album. Really well done albums. If you consider this really took off in the 60s, things like Sgt. Pepper, or even later you get into Pink Floyd. And the album has a cohesive side to it where everything fits together. Together. For classical music, this might be like just a, a composition for an aria or a vocal piece versus an opera. Something is much larger scale. So how do we start thinking larger scale? 
And I think that you probably have the seed for about five or six different books in here because the work really is that good. And I think you should be very proud of that. Anyway, just a couple of thoughts from my end. I kind of don't want to see this as a conceptual book, but I still think it's really strong. The photography is amazing that's in here. And uh, man, keep at it. I, I'm really excited and I love work that gets me excited. So anyway, I'll put a link to Owen's stuff in the show description like I do with everybody else. Owen, thank you for sending. I love it. All right, this is interesting. So next up is this little box that's full of stuff that was sent to me from Dan Fiore, who actually made a comment in here. I featured him in a video a while back. It just says, FYI, at Ted Forbes, thanks for the cameo of my photos and equating me to Madonna. I didn't have a last name, so I said, it's Dan, like Madonna. In fact, it actually is sitting back here behind my computer. This is the uh, little box that Dan sent in before. It's a little metal box that contains some Insta Instamatic prints in it. They're very cool. But today, Dan has sent this box, and I love how people do this, and there's diagrams and stuff. Anyway, art a noun into art a verb. And so basically he writes, Hi Ted, I've created a photo box inspired by you to get my digital images off my SD card and out into the world. My photo boxes allow you and others to participate in the creative process. I have included photo postcards, a pen, stamps, oh, and some cool little push pins, as well as these photo hangers. So the idea is that you can take the images, which are turned into postcards, and quite lovely, I might add. These are actually from Dan's newest book called Narrativa 2002. I'll link this in the show description. Some really nice street photography photos in here. Oh my God, love the dancer. It's gotta be the window at the end of the terminal LaGuardia. I have spent way too many hours there over the years. So two things you can do with this box. You can take the postcards, you can write on the back and you can stamp them because there's stamps here and you can send them to a friend. Old school social sharing. Or you can take the push pins with the little clips and stuff and you can hang them. So this is essentially more or less an exhibition in a box. Okay, this is cool, and I really like the idea. And Dan, give me give me just a little bit of time to think on this because I just opened this and it actually kind of surprised me, but I like the idea of sharing stuff like this, and I like the idea of being able to have a little temporary rotating exhibition here in the studio, perhaps? It's kind of what I'm thinking. I need a space for it, but that would be, I mean, that would be pretty rad and we could have other people send stuff in and we could change things out. Give me some time. If you guys have any ideas on this, please leave me a comment and let me know what you guys are thinking because I love this idea. I love the idea of being able to share them and you have options with them and this is kind of cool and it just kind of gets us out of the internet a little bit and gets us onto the road to sharing our work, which is really cool. So Dan, this is awesome. Thank you so much for sending. I absolutely love it. Photo box with postcards. Dig it. All right, I've got a couple more that I want to share, including this one that came to us from Ukraine. And actually, this is a beautiful book on automotive photography, but really quick, I'll give a shout out to our sponsor this week, who are the always awesome folks over at Squarespace. Listen, you need a website, and we all know how much work that is to build and maintain, but it doesn't have to be. Squarespace is by far the easiest way to build your online presence. It's also the best way to grow a business that works for you without having to write a single line of code. Do you just need a simple portfolio or a blog to showcase your work? Well, Squarespace is perfect. Featuring a drag and drop interface, it's intuitive, it allows you to build galleries quickly and update your site with ease. Are you running a business? Well, Squarespace gives you additional tools for things like appointment scheduling, private member areas, social media tools, and even advanced email marketing. Do you sell products or services? Well, Squarespace has you covered with complete tools to power your store, from merchandising to checkout so that you can sell, ship, and build your customer base. You can even sell classes or manage appointments through your website. And and with Squarespace extensions, you can easily sync with third parties to manage, optimize, and enhance your website. From social media integration to SEO, Squarespace gives you all the tools you need to grow a business that works for you. So head over to Squarespace and sign up for the free trial. Start with one of their award-winning templates and see what you can create and just how good you're going to look. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com AOP and I can save you an additional 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just use the offer code AOP on checkout. So give it a try and see if Squarespace is right for you. And I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, so next up, this is Andrew Sherlot, who is a Ukrainian photographer. This is called Automotive Photographer and has a cool subtitle in here. Genre for car addictive photographers. Andrew sends a note with a QR code. So if you want to follow him on Snapchat, there. There he is. Andrew writes, Hey Ted, I have been subscribed to your channel for quite some time and I love the way that you cover important topics 
in the world of photography, I'm sending you this book for your collection of photo books. Support will be important for me because I'm a photographer from Ukraine. I'm happy to introduce you to the book Car Portraits because for me, cars are like living beings with which I enter into spiritual contact. Best regards, Andrew. So Andrew, this book is beautiful. The work in here is absolutely outstanding. For those of you who've never shot cars before, it is very unusual, unconventional, and it's very difficult to do sometimes this level of skill. Andrew clearly knows what he's doing. I absolutely love all this stuff, Andrew, and I'm going to guess, and there isn't much to critique here because it's so well done, uh, I'm going to guess that you do this commercially as a profession because this is not amateur work at all. It looks really outstanding. The only thing I would say that I kind of want to see you do is step out of this because you clearly know what you're doing and try to add a new dimension into it. And I doubled the spirituality line because I thought it was so cool. What if you were able to take, and I know this is difficult because you've got to get access to cars and you've got to be able to put them in places, but what if you got outside of the studio conventional settings and got in front of me maybe more religious type architecture or something like that. I don't know, it would be neat to see another dimension in these that would take them from being commercial portfolio into something that's really more of a fine art portfolio that would be really cool. Anyway, outstanding work. You should be very proud of this, love it. Oh yeah, and that's Andrew here on the back of the book. And even he's well lit. All right, so next up is this little book called Details Madrid 1967. This comes to us from Bruce Burkow. So the intro to this book reads, the original photograph from 1967 is of Cala de la Concepción Jerónima, not far from Puerta del Sol in central Madrid. The first week that I was in Madrid, I was pleasantly lost in the meandering streets of an old city. I stumbled upon a guitar shop and on a whim purchased their second cheapest guitar. Then somehow found my way back to my room. I later wandered the streets again looking for that guitar shop, but was never able to find it. My room was temporary. I was staying for a year, so I answered an ad in the newspaper, moved to a different part of the city, and then forgot about the shop. Two months after moving, standing on the balcony, I noticed there was something strangely familiar about the view. On the street below, directly across from my new apartment, was the shop where I had bought the guitar, Jose Ramirez Guitars. So here I present for your consideration a view of the street where I lived and some of the many details of that view. For those of you not into classical guitars, Jose Ramirez is kind of a big deal. All right, so Bruce, very nicely done. I think this is an interesting concept, this whole idea of deconstruction. So basically we have one photograph with an accompanying story, and then that's told through looking at details. And I actually like the concept, it's interesting. And I think the way that you pair those up and the way that they play together in sequence uh, makes or breaks the project. And I think it does very well with this. Um, it makes me wanna see more work actually. I like the idea of doing that with one photograph but maybe there's different ways of deconstructing too, maybe involving the same photograph taken at different times or over different years. I assume the original was 67, which is what it said in here. Um, but anyway, it's a great idea and it's very cool. So I really appreciate you sharing. This would be a really cool idea for a zine too, the whole idea of deconstruction of an image. Anyway, very conceptual. I love it. Bruce, thank you for sharing. All right, some great stuff today. And don't forget to leave me a comment on your thoughts on the portable exhibition box thing here. And uh, remember, this is something that Dan sent in a while back. I actually covered this in the newsletter that I send out once a week. And so if you guys want to subscribe to that, it's just an email that comes out and it's just all about art and photography and all that cool stuff comes out every Friday. So I'll put a link in the description below if you want to subscribe to that for more awesomeness. And um, anyway, until the next video, I'll see you guys then, later.